Before the webinar begins, rename your Zoom name to your complete name and department and or affiliation so that we can easily identify you. Kindly mute your microphone when not in use. Next, switch on your video if your connectivity allows you. If you have questions with regards to the presentation, there will be an open forum right after. Please type it in the chat box or use the raise hand reaction button in Zoom and unmute yourself. The session is video recorded.
recordings will be made available at the Silliman Online University Learning website. Heavenly Father, we come to you in this hour, asking for your guidance and protection to our virtual gathering today. We thank you for the gift of life, the gift of family, the gift of work, and the gift of friendship. We thank you for this great opportunity to bring us together in this session as brothers and sisters. Bless the committee, the facilitator, and the attendees of this gathering. May we continue to value and appreciate the true essence and meaning of life with the help of your grace. And as we go along to our discussion today, we humbly pray that you would deepen our understanding. Lord, enlighten us and give us wisdom every day. Forgive us for our shortcomings and remind us to always be mindful of the things we do in life. We offer our life and our decisions to you, O Lord. May this gathering today create a memorable experience and a fruitful outcome. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and our Savior. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Maayong buntag from Dumaguete, from Siliman University. Welcome to the Dr. Mariano Lau um, lecture series on misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation. The Siliman University, Dr. Lau, Dr. Mariano Lau Innovation Creation and Invention Laboratory is a learning space for innovation, creation, and invention while having fun. The laboratory is an advocate for responsible social media use. We have accumulated our digital resources, providing free seminars and workshops that tackles digital citizenship. Our president, Dr. Betty Cernol McCann, during our academic convocation, appealed to the Siliman University community and the larger community to uphold the truth and avoid participating in political campaigns that seek to win voters through fraud, especially the deliberate spreading of disinformation or malinformation. Dr. McCann talked about civic responsibility in the coming national and local elections this May 2022. Dr. McCann emphasized Siliman University's commitment to truth and its discovery, investigation, and dissemination. Our president, Dr. McCann, calls everyone to fight disinformation. The Silliman University information, disinformation, and malinformation. At the end of this seminar, we hope that participants uh, will gain at least a basic understanding of misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation. 
it is also our hope that participants will gain tips and tricks to fight fake news on social media and other forms of fake technologies. We prepared four topics for this lecture series. Today is all about misinformation versus disinformation. Next Saturday, April 9, fact checking on social media by our colleague on the e-learning community from the University of the Philippines Open University, uh, Dr. Joanne Serrano. On April 23, uh, this will talk about deep fake technology and its impact in the society by Dr. Vlad Mariano from Fulbright University, Vietnam. And on the last Saturday of the month, April 30, we will talk about a, a sort of summar uh, summarization of our lecture series, The Sociology of Information, by no less than our research director of Seliman University, uh, Dr. Enrique G. Orason. Welcome, Selimanians. Welcome, non Selimanians, and welcome to our colleagues and friends from and our neighboring schools from other schools. I I see some librarians here. I see colleagues from the Pitan, from Bohol, and some friends in the e-learning community. Thank you for joining with us, especially in this Saturday morning. Friends, any views, sentiments, and opinions of our speakers of his or her personal choice of candidates that may be unconsciously mentioned in this webinar do not reflect the position and stand of the university. As mentioned also, this seminar, this webinar is pre-recorded or we will record this or we are now actually recording this and we will be filtering some of the unnecessary uh, frames of the recording for public posting, which will be uploaded at the Silliman Online University Learning Open Educational Resources. Maayong buntag sa tanan. In this juncture, let me introduce to you our speaker for this Saturday morning. Our speaker is a bachelor of science uh, of bachelor graduate of mass communication from Siliman University. Uh, she graduated master of development communication from the University of the Philippines Open University. She is currently the director of the office uh, office of information and publication of Siliman University. Our former Dean of the College of Computer Studies of Seliman University. Uh, formerly Dean also of Metro Dumaguete College. A News Director of Power 91 DYGB. Editor-in-Chief in, in Kit, uh, Kitang Lung Suranun. Editor-in-Chief also of ne uh, Negros News, uh, Stranger ABS-CBN Cebu, and Contributor of Sunstar Bacolod. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to introduce to you our speaker, particularly on the topic, misinformation versus disinformation. Colleagues in the academe, um, help, uh, let's give a virtual clap and a virtual heart to our speaker this morning, um, Milita C. Aguilar, or we often call her Mam Bing. Mam Bing? Thank you very much, Sir Dave, for the very generous introduction. Yes, if you try to notice, we've been around for so long a time already as a, a journalist, both for print and the broadcast industry. But as we grow and when, as we want to gain more experience, now I'm connected with the academe. But uh, before I start with a not so very serious lecture today, because this is a very, uh, very good topic, especially with all the issues we are facing 
today and particularly the national and local elections that will happen in more than a month from now, specifically on May 9th. So we will be talking about communication, the delivery of information, media literacy, but we will narrow down all these discussions to misinformation and disinformation. So just to give you a little background, uh, <clears throat> basically, if you want to talk about communication, there are only three things. So we used to concentrate on the delivery of information and the entertainment side of any article, any, any uh, video or audio production that you will do. But we now also include the education uh, aspect of communication. It now becomes a cycle, not just a one linear thing that you th there is the sender of the message, the message, and then the receiver of the message. No, it goes beyond that. We now go to uh, the cycle. That's why. And any time of the cycle, the sender of the message would now become the receiver of the message and the receiver of the message would now become the sender. So there is always a cycle, but we will narrow down to the education thing as far as communication is concerned. We just don't stop uh, based on the, uh, on the model of last well, we just don't stop at getting the feedback. We need to answer the question, so what? More on the whys, more on the so what? So we need to educate at least. By, by doing this, we need to deliver the right information. So this is where media literacy comes in. We, uh, we, we, we know that media literacy is an extend, expanded con conceptualization of literacy. The next slide, please. Uh, it includes the ability, your and my ability to as access and analyze media messages. Very simple. It needs our ability to access and analyze these media messages that we are getting, either print, either broadcast, TV or radio, the social, the, the network now, the technology that we have is just a click away. And then we also have to create and reflect and take action. These are the three things that you need to think about as the receiver of the information and later on, somebody who could now be the source of such information, okay? You have to reflect and take action. That's why using the power of information on communication should be taken into proper perspective because you are there to make a difference. It is as simple as that. Talking about uh, more about uh, media literacy, there are five concepts that I just summarize for uh, that I would like to share with you. The number one key concept is all media messages are constructed. That's why I use the close quotation because all these messages are written, are produced both for radio and for TV, and sometimes uploaded, or most of the times with the current situation that we are now uploaded in social media. This is the most important concept. Why? Because the media do not simply reflect external reality. Rather, as what I am I'm emphasizing here, Rather, they present careful crafted constructions that reflect many decisions and are the result of many determining factors. Very, very true. There are so many outside factors that could influence. That's why they are always constructed. 
media literacy works towards deconstructing these constructions. I, I gave her an example to taking them apart to show how they are made. Very simple. The next concept, please. The second concept is media messages shape our perceptions of reality. Yes, these messages birthed our minds. That's why I said there is always that reflection for you to be able to take action. These media are responsible for the majority of the observations and experiences from which we build our personal understandings about the world and how they work. So much of our view of reality is based on media messages. These messages have been pre-constructed. They have attitudes, interpretations, and conclusions that are built within these messages. So media, to a great extent, gives us our sense of reality. It is very, very true. That's why I would always say they always shape our perceptions of reality. Number three, please. The key concept number three means different audience, different understanding of the same message. At the end of this uh, series, see Dr. Arashan, he will be talking about the sociology of information. But for now, let me just say that we are called individuals for nothing. So if the media provides us with much of the material upon which we build our picture of reality, each of us finds or negotiates meaning according to individual factors. Like I said, we are called individuals for nothing. So personal needs and anxieties, the pleasures or troubles of the day, racial or sexual attitudes, family and culture, cultural background, moral standpoint, and so forth. These always differ as far as as each of us is concerned. My understanding to a social issue will not be the same as yours. At a level, probably there are some similarities, but in totality, there is always the difference. Because like I said, this, is the, this has been repeated the third time, we are individuals for nothing, okay? Key concept number four. Media messages have commercial implications. This is now the commercial side or the business side of the entity. Media literacy means or it aims to encourage awareness of how the media are influenced by commercial considerations and how they impinge on content, technique, and distribution. Specific example, why do you think this um, candidates for the May 9, 2022 national or local elections, why do they have to advertise? And why is it that there is the KBP, the Kapisana ng mga broadcasters ng Pilipinas, that will police as to the number of minutes a political aspirant is allowed during the campaign period for both national and local? And there is always the DOTR, the police. They, they, they provide the guide, the, the, the rules and regulations that will govern 
everything. Because like I said, whether we like it or not, there is always the economic consideration of all this. Why is it that when you are watching your, uh, your favorite uh, Korean novella on social media, all of a sudden, maputol ka na ay isulod na commercial. And why is it that these commercials would always impinge on us, particularly about the content? If you try to notice all these commercials, they always have this sense of uh, information. Yet there is that hidden uh, urge or, or, or order for us to, let's say, to buy, to, to patronize. There is always that hidden thing. Because after all, that is what commercial is all about. That is what advertising is all about. So most media production is a business. And so must make a profit. Questions of ownership or control are central. Relatively, a smaller number of individuals control what we watch, read, or hear in the media. That's why it was a very big issue when the, uh, the, the, the ABS-CBN applied for another 25 years for them to, to be able to continue their broadcast, but all of a sudden it was not given. The franchise was not given. So it became an issue because a lot of people were saying, uh, ABS-CBN was their main source of information. Others were saying uh, they feel they, they 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 rely on the on the content, but others were also saying bias manang ABS-CBN. That's why they are called ABS-CBN. These are the things that you need to consider. Right now, they would always say, ah. Kana ang radio station is so biased. Kana ang radio station is against, is a pro. But no, they are just doing business. Hopefully they are. Because as I was monitoring, and I used, because I used to be there, I used to, to work in a radio station. They have what we call block timers. These people are paying for the one hour broadcast. It's either on a weekly basis or a daily basis. They paid for that. So they are called block timers. And they are buying that time. And all these commercial or advertisements aired, they are also being paid. So that is the commercial side of the operation. But again, there is always that subtle information and the subtle urge for the people to patronize such. And I said, there is always that implications when you talk about media, okay? The last but not the least, key concept number four. Media messages embed points of view. Simply put, all media products are advertising in some sense, Proclaiming values and way of life. This is what I started talking about in the in concept number four. So the mainstream media convey explicitly or implicitly ideological messages about issues as the nature of the good life and the virtue of consumerism the role of women, the acceptance of authority, and unquestioning patriotism. There is always that message underlying, embedded in each of these messages. However, 
You need to really discern, really reflect, really understand the bottom line of everything for you to be able to really create, reflect, and take action because after all, that is what media literacy is all about. So this time, let's not talk about specifics. Let's talk about misinformation. For after all, the lecture today is all about misinformation and disinformation. Simply put, misinformation means false information that is spread regardless, take note of the word, regardless of intent. To mislead. It doesn't care about intent and so is simply a term for any kind of wrong or false information. Okay, an example is your family is going to attend a party. The invitation says it's seven o'clock. But your mom, who got the invitation, told everyone in the family, there are five of you in the family. Oh, by the way, we are invited for a dinner at eight o'clock in the evening. So everybody prepared a nun. They left their home at 7.30. They arrived at the venue at 8 o'clock. Lo and behold, the dinner was already in progress. They were in the middle of the dinner. Na late sila. Why? Because the mom told the family that the dinner was eight o'clock when in fact the invitation said it was seven o'clock. On the mom's side, who was the giver, the provider of the information, she had no intention to put the family in a dilemma, to put in a family in a tight situation because after all, she was one of them. She, had, uh, uh, she uh, just forgot na 7 o'clock and 8 o'clock. Now the question is, was that misinformation or disinformation? Let's look at the meaning of misinformation. False information that is spread regardless of intent to mislead. It doesn't care about the intent. And so is simply a term for any kind of false or wrong information. For sure, the mom was the deliverer of misinformation in that situation. Okay? So makes no mention of why this wrong information is being spread around. Let's focus on the third meaning of misinformation it makes no mention of why this information is spread around because again there is no intention to mislead it's very very clear there is no intention to mislead next slide please so misinformation can spread rapidly on a multiple platforms. There are the bots, the trolls, me, social media, message boards, or even word of the mouth. It can spread rapidly. But it cannot just spread misinformation. It can also spread disinformation and propaganda. I am including propaganda in here because later on you'll try to find out why. 
So again, they can rapidly spread. So there are information and tools to help you learn to recognize and fight the bots and trolls that help spread fake news. Later on, we will try to find out what are this. But let's talk, look, look at this information. We have identified what this information is all about. This time, let's look at this information. This information is the deliberate dissemination of false or inaccurate information in order to discredit a person or an organization. It deliberately is misleading or a biased information, manipulated narrative or facts or propaganda. Specific, right? Deliberately misleading or biased information Manipulated narrative or facts or propaganda. Let's go back to the, to the first meaning. Deliberate dissemination of false or inaccurate information in order to discredit a person or an organization. If you've been following there is always the big difference between this information and misinformation based on this meaning of this information. Later on, I will emphasize that. Why I mentioned propaganda? Because propaganda, which is information spread to make someone or something to look bad or good is one form of this information. That's why it's called a propaganda. Okay, so let's now scrutinize misinformation versus disinformation. The terms misinformation and disinformation are all over the news. Okay? Bisag-asa. Especially mo, social media. It's all there. The terms are similar. In both, the, or in that, they both denote information that is false, untrue, inaccurate. Okay? However, they are not interchangeable. Why? Because like we mentioned earlier, misinformation is false or inaccurate information, especially that is that which is deliberately intended to deceive. However, this information is false information which is intended to mislead especially propaganda issued by a government organization to a rival power or the media so, so there is one word there that would guide you on how to identify so to distinguish between misinformation and disinformation keep one very important word in mind, the intent or the intention of doing what, of doing it. Misinformation is just giving false information. But this information is the giving of false information with the intention to mislead a person, a group of organization, or the government. So although both words refer to types of wrong or false information, only 
this information is wrong on purpose. Okay, so while this distinction may seem so simple enough, misinformation and disinformation are similar and sometimes interconnected. So they get used interchangeably. Although we emphasize nga dili gud sila pwede. Kay ang, in, ang, ang misinformation is just the giving of false information. Whereas ang this inform uh, ang disinformation is giving the information with the purpose of giving a wrong information. So use the word disinformation when you know for a fact that false erroneous information is being spread with a purpose to hurt or damage especially the government the organization or public figure so conspiracy theories propaganda deep fakes fake news hoaxes frauds photoshops scams in this digital age, misinformation and disinformation are rampant. Very, very true. Do not take what you read, book, line, and sinker. You have to check and recheck and recheck so that you will not be a victim of misinformation or disinformation. So to help you sort out fact from fiction, consult some of the many trustworthy guides and sources to help uh, your media literacy. So there are Check fact checking sites that I would like to share with you today so that this would help you. Check here in the Philippines, the very files fact check is very uh, popular. The very files fact check tracks the false claims, flip flops, misleading statements of public officials and figures and debunk them with factual evidence. It also fights misinformation and disinformation spread on the internet. So Verifiles is a signatory of the International Fact Checking Network. I had to put my the, the link in here so that this can help you too. Okay. The next checking site that I would share with you is the Check.ph. This is a collaborative fact checking project for the Philippines 2019 elections. So, the three years. So, this is an initiative of the academe and the media to counter this information and provide the public with verified information. Next is the fact check Philippines. Founded in 2017, Fact Check Philippines is a coalition of independent groups and individuals with one common goal. This is to aid in combating fake news and misinformation. So it is the country's first established citizen fact checking organization. So we already have three. Then this Fact Rockers or Rakers is a Philippine based fact checking initiative of journalism majors at the University of the Philippines Diliman, working under the supervision of Associate Professor Yvonne Tichua of the University of the Philippines Journalism Department. I had to mention these two professors because we need to thank them. And Associate Professor Maria Jose Labeste, also of the Journalism Department, that serves as an editorial consultant. Why I am including Ms. Jose Labeste? 
because after all, she is also a graduate from the School of Communication then, now the College of Communication. So, Siliman yan siya. She's now connected sa UP Diliman. So, they are, they started this uh, initiative sa mga journalism majors. The next, media bias slash fact check or MBFC. This is uh, based in the U.S. This was founded in 2015 as an independent online media outlet. It is dedicated to educating the public on media bias and deceptive news practices. So it aims to inspire action and a rejection of overtly biased media. Why I am including this? Because they also provide occasional fact checks, original articles on media bias, and breaking important news stories, especially about the USA politics. I included this because this is why I hope, I'm just hoping that there is an outlet like this in the Philippines that would help educate the public on media bias and deceptive news practices. I know there are already groups working with the academe on this because like here in Siliman University, we are slowly doing this. If you listen to the message of Dr. McCann during the convocation, she was urging the Silliman community to conduct specifically voters education. And this is one uh, step forward. Hopefully we can do this and a lot of people will because after all this is very very important by the way uh for those who are not aware and i would like to uh give thanks to the mascom students who attended yesterday the uh, uh the lecture series because there will be two uh conducted by abs uh cbn uh, it started at 9 yesterday, and there's another one on April 4 on Monday. And before that, we also had the master class series, and we hosted the third leg of that master series, uh, backed up by GMA. So it's a very good avenue where people would really learn what is or our obligation, our responsibility as a voter. First and foremost, we need to uh, do our duty and our exercise our right to suffrage. Okay, so that is a good start. Next, please. Snopes. This is an evidence-based source of for fact-checking, urban legends, folklore myths, rumors, and again, misinformation. A lot of people are, uh, I've been doing this. I, I usually uh, check, especially kana mga conspiracy theories, I check on na notes. Okay, next please. Politic fact is also based in the U.S. This is in Tampa Bay Times, a uh, project of uh, Tampa Bay Times. It is an independent, nonpartisan fact-checking website that traits the accuracy of claims by elected officials and others who speak about American politics. Again, this is based in Florida, in the Tampa Bay area. Okay, next please. Uh, factcheck.org. Factcheck.org is a project of the Annenberg Public Policy Center of the University of Pennsylvania. So they monitor the factual accuracy of political speeches, debates, news stories, and other uh, communications. So if you try to look at all this uh, news uh, or this 
sites, they would help you check the veracity of what you are reading in social media, especially. Because like I said, it's very, very rampant. And that is one, uh, probably I would say adverse uh, kind of reaction to technology. The, 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 how fast can you get the information can sometimes be also the how fast are you, you are deceived. So basically, you need to really look into all this. Because after all, at the end of the day, it is you who needs to reflect because you, after all, has to take action. But the bottom line to all this is summarized into two words. Next slide, please. Accuracy matters. At the end of the day, you need to know the facts. It should be factual. It should be free of bias. It should be educational. Because after all, at the end of the day, you have to achieve accuracy. Manang ginaingon nga ang ABC of journalism or communication, which is accuracy, brevity, and clarity, would always apply. But talking about misinformation versus this disinformation, accurate accuracy would always matter. Okay. I would like to end uh, my lecture today by talking briefly about the national and local elections. A lot of people would sometimes or would usually listen to just one. No, I would, a friendly advice, listen to what all these political aspirants are saying. Because after all, you will be the decision maker. Come May 9, and this is the challenge, come May 9. I hope by then you were able to reflect. You were able to know the accurate information rather than believing in misinformation or disinformation. Because after all, the future is at the tip of your pen. Come May 9, it's you who will do the decision. It's you who will decide, but again, Learn. Every day is a learning process. We never stop learning. It is always life's challenge because every day as we wake up in the morning and before we sleep in the evening, there is always that growth in us. We never stop learning. We never stop growing. Because after all, we are humans being. Thank you so much for listening to me. I hope you have learned something from today's lecture. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, I'm being and uh, I I actually learned a lot uh, being in the information technology and. Uh, uh, yes, we have uh, media information and literacy, but it's nice to revisit again the concepts of uh, media literacy. 
uh, create, reflect, and and take action. I have actually some notes here, but uh, I would like to invite our participants uh, to raise questions and uh, take our opportunity because we have a very um, what's this? Uh, we have an invited guest today that can actually equate the uh, academic perspective and the industry perspective of media <laughs> of media and information literacy because uh, like me my perspective is very academic and uh, i just realized um which later on i will ask if uh, again uh, i invite um the participants if you have questions you can actually chat them but uh, we encourage you to switch on your microphone perhaps uh, we can we can unmute you and um, we can give you the screen and raise your questions but uh, if you don't like to uh, speak uh, on screen uh, please chat them either to everyone on the chat or you can chat your questions uh, directly to me dave marshall is my name on screen so please uh, chat your question. While waiting for the others, Ma'am Bing, uh, I, I, I took note some of these very important uh, uh, notes from, from what I got, uh, especially on deconstructing this construction. And you were mentioning also that in media, there is always the commercialization aspect. Ma'am Bing, I always hear about this uh on on social media that media is always biased it's not just simply about absbn gma and all those uh media media outlets mambing what what can you say about it and based on your you know experience and being an educator on uh in media literacy uh sir dave thank you for the question uh, basically, each entity, whether it is a TV station, a radio station, a newspaper outfit, they have what they call an editorial policy. They are governed by the editorial policy, and this will guide them in their day-to-day -day operation. So each outfit uh, differs. So... I will not say it's true or it is not true. It depends on their leading. But again, let me emphasize when uh, I will I will uh, emphasize that the commercialization side of this uh, operations. For after all, this is a business. There is always that commerciality that comes in in each of their operation. So they will always go with the flow. Like I said, a block timer. Let's say if I am running as for the governor of the province, even before I said, nga modagan ko, nananom na ko, I already planted something. So I bought a one hour or 30 minutes nga time in a particular radio station talking about what are the issues of the day meaning i am introducing already myself through the listeners of the radio station i cannot say that now as a lecturer i cannot say that this radio station will favor me in the coming election because i am a client the 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 Aspirant is a client after all. And that is the, the real sense of the business side of each, uh, of each entity. Again, the bottom line, I asked the same question, Annie Sir Dave, during the master class. How will, how will the editorial policy of, uh, let's say it's a GMA, affect their being apolitical or nonpartisan? in the coming election so the answer there is there is always the rules and regulations each outfit is governed as far as their operation is concerned 
they it may be true that they are biased to one or contra sa uban but again the bottom line there it is a business entity after all yeah after all also man being you mentioned that uh, on the fifth a key concept of uh, media literacy that media embeds points of view and obviously uh, one of the concept also is telling us that uh, different audiences negotiate also our own viewpoints that is why it is difficult really to exactly. argue if someone or somebody posted a misinformation or a disinformation article that really somehow reflects also their own uh, understanding of the fact no um yeah it very true very true uh that's why uh we have to educate ourselves we don't have to rely on what we hear what we see and what we read personally you have to learn by yourself that's why later on all of these people who are who are with us today they will always understand when sir i comes the sociology of information it's all there because even if how we bomb we are bombarded with all the information but at the end of the day it's us because we are individuals our perception of any issue is different from yours from others yeah that is why i'm very much excited also about that uh, sociology of information mam being mam being we have one question here from uh, yes. uh, sheila christine ledesma uh -huh. um, may i read the question uh, since media information literacy is still relatively new in the philippines maybe referring to a subject or a course uh, there is confusion and misunderstanding about teachers competencies uh to teach uh MIL media information literacy despite these limitations and to compensate for the lack of preparedness and inadequacy of materials can you share time tested and familiar strategies quote and quote that would help teachers introduce relevant topics to generation z okay Thank you very much for the question. I just would like to give a little background about when senior high school started. I was with Metro Dumaguete College then. So I was one of those uh, people who really prepared for this. And I took it upon myself to really push that since media literacy is a core course, it should be handled by somebody who is familiar with communication. So in other words, a graduate from a mass communication or journalism is a plus because after all media literacy should start with the remember i i said in my lecture it has to start with the power of information and communication so who is the better person who can really explain and understand communication than somebody who really finished communication okay uh journalism or a mass communication course is a is a plus ma'am to answer your question and there are uh specific courses that you need to that you need to really uh infuse in the curriculum that DepEd has uh prepared so for uh it was not really a a semester but a few months that i handled media information literacy here in silicon university but the hono mangutu because i was assigned get assigned to dr malayang as the oic dean of the mass communication uh, or sa college so uh ako since i am a practitioner i always do make use of that When I handle my class, I don't give long exams. I don't give uh, uh, I I don't give uh, midterm or finals na exams. But I will always let them do something. Okay, just an example. Just harun si mam ma ma kwan po. 
an example of my environmental journalism class. I always give them, uh, I give them a lecture. In one week, di ba, twice man tamo meet sa college, I give them a lecture once. The second is a synchronous activity. What will they do <laughs> with their synchronous activity? It's either they will do the interview, interview their sources, or visit a community for them to really be able to really uh, immerse. Because ang ilang midterm nga requirement is for them to write news features with an injection of the cultural dimension in their story. So practical application is very, very important. In our middle class, yes, immersion is there. But asa man mo immerse na to ang mga bata, dapat they will be able to really understand. Development communication is very, very important. Communi community communication is very important. Community journalism is very, very important. Why? Because you need to empower all these people in the grassroots levels. Because there is now a change in the pedagogy pedagogical system. It's not uh, bottoms up. It's not from top to bottom, but you have to meet halfway for you to be able to really deliver. So I think that is the proper way of uh, uh, what I can uh, what I can give and I can share for ano mam kaning para sa middle na class. I hope mam Ledesma okay rani mo to mam. Yeah, uh, the question also mam being and your response also uh, uh, brought me to this question uh, considering of you know qualification to teach and even uh, um, you know protecting really the 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 correct way of doing uh, communication and etc mambing what's your idea about this generation z content providers you know you were mentioning about there is always business and media and much more that we can see online, especially on social media content producers, right? I don't want to mention, I don't want to mention this, but they are very popular. Our young generations really love to subscribe, um, not necessarily on political content, but you know, uh, even from our from our uh, actors and actresses. There's a lot YouTube uh, vloggers and so on and so forth. What's your opinion on how they? exercise how they exercise and practice uh media information literacy and you know uh, what are the things that we should know being the consumer of the content that they are providing to us uh the answer to that is the last slide that i presented accuracy matters be sure you know or be sure you uh check the veracity of the information that you are that you are learning and I'm, I'm doing this because sometimes misconstrued na to. so veracity is very very important the accuracy of the information you are so to those in fairness to them they do it as a bit uh, uh, source of income okay yeah in fairness to them so, ang ako lang hangyo is provide factual and accurate information. Because after all, kita mo, mo kuan raman guta mo, mo believe dayon. Especially if, tinuod bene, especially if somebody well known, somebody well known who will provide the information. Mutuo da yung ta. Hook, line, and sinker. Ay, gitulon yun na to. Pero naaday sa yung pato. So, what we will do is, please, do not rely on one source. When I ask my students to write articles, I will always ask them three to five sources. And do interviews. Kanang men on the street, they are the best source of information for all you know. But also get information from the experts. 
So again, do not rely on one information source. That is the best thing that we, we could do. Okay? Yeah. I think this is my last question and uh would love to would love also to uh what's this to pick up your line mom being uh that we have uh, we should not rely on one person but this is very rampant nowadays especially on social media the so called thing respect my opinion uh I, I would love to ask this question to you, Ma'am Bing, but, but for sure, this is going to be a very interesting question for the topic sociology information. But I would like to get some perspective from you being a practitioner. Uh, what's your opinion also about this? Respect my opinion that is be, become viral nowadays, like uh, this famous and expert person trying to twist and information also and many people are sharing the same i mean sharing their blogs uh, sharing their content but when you fact check it it's it's totally different from their views and their opinions okay yeah uh it's true that uh we always have to respect because each each of us have different views uh in each uh, issue that we encounter every day. But sometimes, can uh, I I'm sorry for the word. You do it because you want to gain something. I'm sorry for, the, for that. But it's true. Okay, yes, I will respect your opinion, but your opinion is wrong. What? are the basis of your opinion please inform us because after all we are consumers of the information you are giving and that is your responsibility to provide the right information to your audience to your followers to your viewers to your listeners to your readers, that is your obligation and that is your responsibility. So maybe you could say, if I am, if I will do it, I would always say, okay, this is my opinion to this issue. But according to, see, that will differ. And that will give you more credence, the credibility. After all, credibility is very, very important. I have learned that when I graduated from Siliman, nagtake kong maskom, nagwork ko, nahimo kong stringer sa ABS-CBN, nahimo kong editor in chief of local paper, na contributor ko so so different fields. But at the end of the day, I always take care of the credibility. Because credibility is so hard to build, but with just one mistake, hmm, kaput, it's gone. So, muna, ako, Sir Dave, imong pangatan on, if I am doing it, I would always say, respect my opinion because this is how I think about it. This is what I believe. But according to sources, so and so, especially if you are getting information from, di man kung reliable sources, but experts. So that will balance because after all, balance is very, very important in whatever thing that you do. Yeah, I totally agree from a researcher's uh, perspective, man being. Uh, it's basically similar to review of related literature that even though you are exactly. bounded to explain your exactly. objective of the research, but still you have to present some critical analysis. That means that even if that is from the author's perspective, opinion's perspective, it is still our responsibility being the provider, the sender of the communication to be responsible and to critically present content that are mm -hmm. uh, based on, you know, based on sources, experiences, and obviously uh, uh, factual in nature. The same is true also with Daniel Gaston here. Ha ha ha, so true, ma'am. <laughs> 
Yes, sir. Yeah, it's true because after all, really, we just don't rely on giving the information. We just don't inform. We just don't entertain. But the third is the most important, what which is to educate. Kana agud jay kana importante sa about communication, about the the provider of the information. At the end of the day, it's you. But yes, your opinion matters, but you have to back it up with reliable sources like from experts. Diba? To, yeah. to make you sound credible. I love it, Mang Bing. And um, uh, according to Sheila, again, the critical analysis allows you to have greater clarity on the issues and information you process and from daniel again you cannot use your opinion in an argument that relies on fact exactly super agree uh do we have other questions also we have uh i'm thankful that we have some librarians here because uh you know our dear librarians are are so-called our access to the repository of obviously i assume uh, right information, correct information, and so on and so forth. Uh, and and uh, I I am hoping that everyone have learned. I learned a lot today. I am trying to I am trying to compose myself not to not to overlap with the next topic, which is about social media. On the yeah. third topic is about deep fake technology. I really invite you, deep fake. My God, that's really from our field. It's really horrible. The the research area on deep fake technology it's really really horrible, <laughs> and uh, we could we could learn more on that. And of course, on the last day, our lecture series is on is on uh, sociology of information. After all of this uh, about technology, the process, the concept, it all boils down to us as a person. Uh, because we could not deny the fact of the recent, you know, uh, preparation for our political, uh, I mean, election day. There's a lot of people continue to be a peddler of uh, misinformation, disinformation, because again, maybe because of their own personal perspective bias, shall we call that, or uh, their own... Uh, uh, negotiation of the meaning of the information. Thank you for that, Mam Bing. And uh, at this juncture, we would like to thank you, as always, of course, uh, uh, for having with us. Uh, it's really a good start for the lecture series on misinformation and disinformation. Thank you very much, Mam Bing. Okay, yeah. Thank you also to the Mariano Lao Technology Laboratory for uh, inviting the Office of Information and Publications of Siliman University to share this information. And this is always a great welcome for after all the university is always uh, looking uh, at avenues where we could always share, we could always uh, uh, inform and provide the correct information to our students, to our friends, to our colleagues, because after all, this is part of the university's mission and vision, uh, Sir Dave. Thank you again, and thank you for having me. Yes, and uh, of course, our virtual uh, certificate of recognition to you, Ma'am Bing, for joining us today, being our speaker. Uh, as I mentioned during our introduction, Seliman University, through uh, the Dr. Mariano C. Lau Innovation Creation and Invention Laboratory, advocate responsible netizenship, and we feel and we believe that it is also our part or as our contribution to this uh, preparation for our right to vote and at the same time for a clean election. So uh, thank you very much for joining. And we hope that in the next three topics, uh, you will still be with us. And please uh, invite your colleagues, your friends, your students, if there are teachers here, students really, because uh, it 
always disheartened me every time I check on social media. There are so many Generation Z sharing all those misinformation, disinformation, and um, everything. Please invite your friends, your classmates. This is actually open to non-Selimanians, uh, open to everyone who would like to learn more and advocate uh, to fight against misinformation and disinformation. For you to be able to receive your certificate, uh, please uh, um, evaluate our our link is uh, to be posted on the chat box for you to be able to um, evaluate uh, today's activity. And at the same time, also not just simply because of the certificate, this will also help us. Uh, the Dr. Mariano Lau ICI Laboratory to improve and to give you more uh, valuable information and to improve how we facilitate uh, this webinar. Uh, before we'll end, um, we hope to, if you can switch on your um, camera, please uh, switch on your camera for a photo opportunity. Uh, as mentioned also during the start of the program, this will be uh, posted on the social media of the Dr. Mariano Lau ICI Laboratory and some other means of uh, publications in Seliman University. I'd like to acknowledge our friends from University of Cordilleras. Thank oh. you very much. Please extend my uh, uh, greetings to Dr. Nancy. Um, of course, Sheila is here. I think we have from Jose Ris that's in the Pitan also. Uh, of course, from our friends from from University of Cordilleras. Yeah. Thank you very much. Please invite your network uh, yeah. for the succeeding succeeding lectures uh, because uh, we feel that uh, it is always, you know, uh, it is always um, nice to relearn and, and learn also this matter, not just because of the election day election thing but obviously uh, because it all boils down to us the consumer of information steve okay all right so please hold on your smile for a few seconds i have one frame uh -huh. so let me count one two three then hold on your smile okay one two three smile Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve. Hi, Rio. Kumusta dai? Rio is my student in the Bliss program. Thank you very much uh, for your participation and attendance. I hope um, you evaluated already our evaluation form. And we will be sending you your certificate of attendance for today's webinar. So once again, uh, this is Dave Marshall and we hope to see you uh, in our next or future uh, lecture series and even our next um, free education activity which is also happening this afternoon. Uh, email etiquette, this is also one of a very important aspects or topic when it comes to responsible use of social media and of becoming a responsible digital citizenship. So please join our free computer education uh, list of topics we actually started last term and we will end at the end of may a free computer education at dr mariano Lau iti laboratory in every saturday two o'clock in the afternoon be sharing also the link of all the uh, seminar or hands-on activities of the free computer education of Dr. Mariano. So with that, dagang salamat once again for joining Kitakit on our next webinar of Teleman University, Dr. Mariano Lau, ITI Laboratory. God bless everyone.